Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I am Aditya and I am first year student at IIM Calcutta. I graduated from IIT Delhi in 2021, uh, did work in Capital One for almost a an year and came here uh, to pursue my MBA. And uh, you will hear uh, further on my interview experience uh, in, uh, in coming minutes as we go around answering your questions. Uh, my experience in IIM Calcutta as of now has been phenomenal. As we enter here, we have some, uh, you will uh, get to interact with the seniors, with the professors and some of the events you'll have. After that, uh, you'll have your summer placements. Uh, you'll go around uh, hustling, meeting a lot of people, giving a lot of interviews, going through a new experience over there. And after the summer experience, then again, you'll have your uh, regular classes and uh, you'll get to know more about uh, what business subjects uh, really are and you'll get a good flavor of it as you come here. Uh, for now, uh, over the course of session, uh, we'll be uh, introducing one by one and then we'll be taking your questions uh, specific to the interview processes. Okay, so I'll go next. So hi everyone, uh, this is Anusha. Um, I did a, a integrated bachelor's and master's BSMS degree from ISA Bhopal uh, with a majors in chemistry. So I'm a freshman just joined, finished in 2022 and finished my program in May and I was here in Calcutta in June. Um, yeah, so it's been a pretty, you know, roller coaster ride for me. Like um, a lot of things always are going on over here, whether it's exams or placements or, you know, it's, we have a lot of sports activities here and I'm really involved in that. So there's always something or the other going on. So yeah, it's been um, a very interesting experience. And yeah, um, you can go ahead and hear from Shamar Open Sitan. Hello, Anusha. Hi, everyone. I'm Sitan. I graduated from NIT Trichy in 2020 with a BTEC in Instrumentation and Controls. And uh, post that, I worked in the field of analytics consulting for close to two years, uh, most recently with PwC, uh, and before coming here. And now I'm here. And uh, my experience at Angular uh, the first six months has been pretty great. I think, you know, coming from an engineering background, uh, getting to learn all these subjects like finance, marketing has been really interesting. And, you know, also some of the few things I've learned is uh, like time management, prioritization of like what you basically you can't do everything here. You have to choose and pick what you want to do here. So these are some of the things I've learned here and I'll talk much more about it uh, in the coming minutes. So. Hey everyone, my name is Shomarup. Uh, so I did my undergraduate from NIT Warangal, majored in computer science and engineering, graduated in 2019. Uh, post that, I spent around three years uh, at Visa in Bangalore working as a software developer, and then I joined back uh, to uh, on my MBA journey. So I'm originally from Calcutta, so it's kind of like a circle around uh, for me in, my, in life. And uh, as we go ahead, you will hear, and I think you've already heard from my other friends here, the journey here has been actually phenomenal. It is possibly all that you've dreamed of and more. And I think you will kind of go ahead and realize as soon as you join an MBA program, how demanding it can be. And at the same time, how enjoyable it can be. So uh, yeah, go ahead, shoot your questions. Because at this point, I think what needs to be really answered is that how can you go about doing your PI prep really well so that you can actually realize your dream and whatever you're aiming for. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll just take questions one by one. Uh, let's first uh, share briefly our interview experiences here so that folks have a clearer idea of what a candidate interview might look like. And then uh, we can take their questions. So let's start with Anusha, probably. Uh, sure, I'll go first. Uh, so my interview experience actually was pretty interesting. So I think Calcutta was one of the more interesting interviews that I had. Um, considering that my background is from chemistry, generally the first question I'm asked is why an MBA? I mean, it's a very natural question. And I think for people who especially come from an, uh, uh, you know, diverse academic background, this question will come up, you know, it's going to come up. So prepare well for this question, you know, have a thorough line of reasoning ready, ready, you know, be ready to defend your uh, argument to whichever panel that you're going to interview for. 
so for me uh, my why mb answer focuses a lot on the topic of sustainability so um that's where uh, the discussion sort of began for me and then you know the prof asked me a bit more about carbon capture and green gasoline because that also ties into my degree as well as the sustainability interest that i talked about so i think they were just trying to gauge whether i actually know about um, you know the field of sustainability or am i just you know saying something for the sake of it so from there i did get a chance i had prepared and i knew about that so i got to talk about that and from that we went into a little more of the business aspect of things where they spoke about you know if they had to set, if i had to set up a plant uh, for carbon capture or something what would how would i go about it what would be the major costs involved here we came across a concept they asked me about fixed and variable costs which i did not know about so one of the other things i did is i you know straight up told them that i am not really aware about this so they were actually pretty really helpful they told me what it was and helped me take the interview forward from there so another tip would be that if you get stuck somewhere you genuinely do not know an answer just it's okay to uh, admit that and admit that you don't know because you won't actually end up knowing everything in an interview just be calm be humble um say that you don't know and then they'll probably uh, either ask you something else or help you with that so we spoke a bit about that and then we spoke a bit about you know if we had to get like let's say the prime minister to uh, start getting people to use biofuels how would you do that in terms of you know uh, playing with the tax rate so that is again an interesting thing i had never thought of so it was actually a pretty interesting discussion that we had with them um so that was uh, mostly the discussion revolved around these lines um at the end as another thing is they asked me to, towards the end do you have any questions for us So this has already been a question that I didn't really know how to answer. You know, everyone asks this, but that time it just struck me that I, you know, spoke to them about the whole online offline experience. I think I asked them whether there's any situation they thought in case of offline classes, would you ever go back to online? So that led to again a small discussion about the challenges that professors as well as students face in online classes and how can we sort of try to challenge that. So um, I think that uh, if you are able to come up with a good question there, always ask. as a bit more um, to your interview and gives you a little bit of an edge so yeah that was about my interview uh said so would you like to go next yeah sure so um, you know most of my interviews across the b schools were focused around my work ex uh, and maybe a few hr questions like why mba and you know what are your long term or short term goals but uh, imc was very different it was mainly i think divided into three parts it started with my uh, work ex of course it they asked me you know what did you do at pwc where they expected a very thorough answer and then uh, based on my answer there were a few follow on questions for example my work was in analytics so you know they followed up with you know if uh, let's say in uh, in, in mumbai bmc had to develop a dashboard what uh, metrics would they like to track uh, you know what Why? Why are dashboards important? Like these kind of questions regarding my work ex, and then they move to uh, basically move to my undergraduation, which was basically instrumentation. There, they uh, I think the questions were pretty straightforward. When when it comes to your uh, UG, the questions are straightforward, but you know they can be from anywhere. They can range from any topic. So typically, the interviewers ask you across interviews, they ask you, you know, what is your favorite subject? So there, uh, if they ask you that, you're very lucky. You can choose your favorite subject and you know answer two, three easy questions on top of it. But sometimes they can just ask you from any topic. So it's best to be prepared with like you know at least two to three of the main subjects. Like for instrumentation, I think uh, at least for me, industrial instrumentation sensors are very important. So the questions were very straightforward there. Uh, they asked me like you know if uh, there's a nuclear plant, what are the sensors that would be installed there? Uh, you know like uh, what are the transducer? Like on these lines. and then post that the last phase was on math they asked me questions from modulus uh, differentiation integration and a pnc question so i would say again the questions in math are also pretty straightforward just it's very important to know like the like the like the foundation should be strong because they asked me like the definition of a derivative where you know we have to go back to our books and we don't typically learn all this in our last two year work ex so i think yeah so these are the three parts of my uh, interview and yeah i think shomru can go next Yeah. So most of my interviews, uh, given that I had three years of, I mean, around two point five years of work ex at the time of interview, uh, I got really a light pass on my undergrad subjects. Uh, not to mention that uh, definitely I, I had probably one or two questions across all the interviews that I did. But then majorly they were they were not as academic focused as many of what you would expect your uh, interviews to be. Uh, but having said that, yes, please prepare your subjects well if you. possibly from a cs background uh try to brush up your subjects in terms of say a little do a little bit of coding the basic algos which is bubble sort etc maybe uh, pick up one or two favorite uh, favorite subjects in some 
in terms of say database management or operating systems and try to just brush up your uh, basics so that you are not caught by if you are asked those questions at the end of the day however uh, my i am calcutta interview was uh, markedly very different from what my other interviews were and now that uh, anusha and sadan and possibly aditya will have will also be sharing his experience and um, they have given you the general flavor of how the their interviews progress i feel it's also equally important to be prepared for the worst and uh, my interview was essentially a very stress interview Uh, to begin with, uh, I got a call on the thirteenth of Feb. I remember very distinctly, and three days later, my interview was scheduled. So it's very important also to be prepared for the interview at any point in time. Now that you have your calls out and your applications almost ready, so do not try to postpone it to the last moment because there's a lot to cover, and you will just not be able to put your best foot forward if you're trying to procrastinate uh, your preparation and. to the very end right um having said that i am calcutta interviews generally tend to focus a lot on mathematics by but my interview had none of it even though i had prepared like one full day about you know the core mathematics concepts that need to be asked or that that were generally asked in amcal interviews uh so essentially my interview was kind of focused on the sop that i had written however uh, he just uh, i mean the interviewer uh, were two professors i had and they picked up uh, words at random from the application and tried to grill me on it uh i remember uh, there was one ma'am who asked me only one question which was why mba while the other professor mm. was essentially asking me all sort of all sorts of questions which uh, ranged from uh, who is the founder or who is the president of the uh, or what is the name of the party that uh, the turkish president belongs to all the way to uh, you know uh details a uh, quintessential details about the going ons in the current uh, economy especially at that point in time the russia ukraine war was in vogue uh, along with that i had traveled to nepal recently and i mentioned it in my introduction so he essentially went ahead and asked me about the history of nepal and all together and it was a constant badgering of questions that uh that was meant to put me on the edge but i feel what got me through was essentially and i converted calcutta in the first list which i absolutely had no dreams of doing so because uh the only thing possibly i think that worked for me was keeping a smiling face and accepting whatever the interview was interview was putting forward in front of me right so it's very important not to lose your calm not to uh start stuttering in 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 your answers because that kind of shows that you do not have confidence in what you speak so maintain calm maintain a uh, composure have confidence and try to also be respectful towards the professors i think that is what goes up and uh, goes ahead in the long run and i think possibly uh, preparing on all these nitty gritties that you plan to uh, kind of mention in your introduction or anywhere throughout your application will hold you in good stead in the long run over to you aditya right i kind of agree with shobhab i think probably our panel was the same so my interview was uh, also quite grilling uh, the thing uh, my interview was essentially divided into two broad parts first one was uh, why mba it was like a plain vanilla question why mba and as i as i was trying to answer that particular question the interviewer tried me to cut at every single word that they could hear so uh, as i spoke about uh, development and all the interviewer tried uh, the interviewer tried to cut me the uh, tried to ask if this is a well prepared answer or this is something you really want they also tried to uh, basically go into uh, the intricacies of what i was saying they were asking okay do you want to uh, have some entrepreneurial venture uh, what do you think about that do you have any idea uh, have you worked in a uh, banking sector so what kind of uh, basically experiences did you have here how how does it link to your mba journey and the, the, there were all kind of questions that you can expect out of that two three line a uh, statement that i gave so that was uh, one particular thing the next part of my interview was broadly around my work ex and my past experiences at in my undergraduate on the work ex part also uh, you need to be clear with the basic concepts if you have a work experience so suppose you are working in a banking industry or in a financial sector so you need to be clear with everything that's going around with that particular sector you need to be clear that was going uh, like if your bank is uh, supposed based out of america you need to be clear of what new rules and regulations are coming up there what new restrictions are uh, there in that particular region also you need to take care of as uh, your b school is based out of india you need to have the knowledge of what's uh, what counter measures or what uh, what uh, basically 
counter factors do uh, work in india for that particular thing how does the system work in india how does the system work in us what are the differences how can india catch up if it's lagging behind so prepare all around the sector which you are working in second uh, please try to brush up as said also mentioned please try to brush up basic concepts of uh, your ug course so it's very important the interviewers won't go very deep into each and every concept but they would test your uh, they would test your understanding of what a particular subject is about suppose they are asking about thermal engineering or they are asking about production engineering so they would want to know a few examples of how that particular concept is applied they would want to know what that concept means they won't uh, probably look uh, want you to solve a numerical on it but they need to know that uh, you are uh, basically thorough with the concepts that you have learned so that is a major thing which i learned out of my interview and again uh, keeping a smiling face and acknowledging what feedback the interviewer is giving uh, is like of utmost importance uh, they are there to test your uh, strength they are there to like uh, essentially it's not essential that you will get this kind of interviewer only a uh, few interviewers are uh, which like most of my friends uh, got are very supportive they try to help you navigate through the interview then they uh, basically most of the times test your uh, depth of knowledge what what is there and uh, uh, what do you know what do you not know and few of the interviewers try who probably know that you are good with your concepts they try to grill you more on your uh, basically uh, uh, mental skills or interpersonal skills they try to see that uh, how much patience do you have how much stress can you handle and that is the skill which you need to show in your interview uh so that was all uh, what i could uh, recall broadly from my interview and what are the key takeaways i'll now move on with the questions and we'll uh, take the questions one by one so we have a question from anish singh uh, so they are asking uh, uh, about the impact of workex and the cats in the interview or how questions can be vented around so anish has a workex of 8 months and they want to know if they will be graded on their workex or a cats what should they like prepare more for so uh, anyone can said probably you want to pick it up i think uh, with 8 months workex definitely can be graded on a cats uh, like it's too soon like flash some group said you know yes three or workex and that is why maybe they focused on his workex but with 8 months like even for me i had two year workex and Uh, I mean, one third of my interview was around my UG, so definitely focus on academics, brush up on your uh, basics, uh, pick up like seven to eight topics and learn them properly. Uh, if they ask you for a favorite subject, be ready for that. Uh, be ready to answer that. Pick up on that. Make the most of it. Yeah, I think anyone else wants to add? They can. Right, correct. With eight months of uh, work ex, uh, like I also had uh, approximately one year of work ex. So they try to balance between both. They know that you don't have, you won't probably have in-depth knowledge of the sector on which you are working on. So they try to ga- gauge whatever knowledge you have, and then they will shift to your accounts. They will definitely expect that uh, you are still thorough with your accounts. A uh, second question is from Akshat Anandi. So uh, the question goes as, uh, I don't have any extracurricular activities to write in my profile. How is it going to affect my interview? So. Uh, Shamru, uh, would you like to take it? Uh, so I don't think uh, the interviewers are there to reject you. I think they are there for a reason to select you, right? So they will essentially look for items that you kind of are interested in. So suppose you do not have extracurricular activities, I uh, personally don't think that is going to be much of a problem because they will look at other things. Maybe if you have good acads or. or uh, wherever you've done your ug if you have a work experience whatever industry you're working in what your hobbies are possibly these are the things that you can actually focus and drive your interview towards and it's very important to remember that the introduction that you give in the first one minute uh, so most interviews uh, obviously there are exceptions most interviews start 
with the interviewer asking you for a brief introduction. So you have the capability and the power to put in words or put in hobbies, mention stuff in your introduction that is essentially going to lend the direction to your interview. So uh, personally, I think it is what you make of it. And I do not feel uh, that you will have much of a uh, hurdle in because uh, at the end of the day, there is no specific points for extracurricular activities, right? When you look at the entire chart of how the admission criteria goes on. So I don't, I don't think you should focus on what you do not have, rather focus on what you do have and try to make the best of it. And Chomuru, if I can just add to your thing, um, I mean, a worst case and unlikely scenario is what you, you would probably think of whatever prof picks on that, that why do you not have extracurricular activities, right? It's very unlikely because they will focus on what you do say. But in the worst case that actually happens, I would say maybe just have like a justification ready for them. Maybe you were focused on academics, maybe you had some other reason, it was a personal reason, whatever the reason be. Just to be honest about it, and I would say just try to give a justification for it at, at the first year. Great, I think it covers uh, it all. So next question is from Ishan Jawla. The question is, uh, do engineers get an edge over non-engineers in B-School? So I think Anusha, you would be uh, the best person to answer. Um, okay, so this is kind of tricky. Uh, three engineers sitting with me, but um, I would say that, you know, maybe there are a couple of subjects where some people from um, some like maybe computer science engineers might be a little more familiar with some subject, be mechanical with another one. But um, I would say it's not like non-engineers can't uh, survive here. That's not the case at all. Maybe uh, engineers might be more familiar uh, or in touch with mathematics at the most in case, you know, you're comparing engineers versus people who have not taken uh, science in 11th or 12th or not done the sort of JE prep. So I, it's definitely possible, like non-engineers can definitely make it in a B school. Um, I would say if you have a problem with maybe uh, mathematics, again, there, are, there is like a preparatory uh, sort of co classes that happen in the week before the course actually starts. Um, so that's always there. And of course, you have your friends here. And that's actually the best resource to help you learn. You will realize that once you come here, uh, friends make everything easier in terms of learning. So don't worry about that. I would say just focus on your prep and you'll definitely be able to manage once you get here. Um, I would definitely like to point out one thing here. As Anusha talked about friends and how friends uh, help in processes. So what I have realized over my experience of uh, what six seven months here is that uh, the kind of uh, brotherhood or the kind of uh, friendship that you would get here in IIM Calcutta is unparalleled. So folks are here always there to help each other. Uh, there is also a tag, which a tagline which we use in Joker that uh, we lo we leave no one behind. So that essentially means that we always take care of our friends. And uh, whether it be placements, whether it be examinations, whether it be assignments, we try uh, that no one is left behind. We always uh, take care of each other. Uh, one more thing here would be that uh, talking about uh, what extra edge engineers can get and is there anything which uh, non-engineers have a benefit, like uh, which non-engineers would have a slight benefit of. So MBS is actually about a lot of subjects which uh, you'll get to learn here. And you would realize most of the times that a few courses are definitely more heavy on mathematics. But at the same time, there are many other subjects which are not so heavy on mathematics. Those are a kind of theoretical and uh, those would either be linked to finance. Some courses would be linked to legal. Some courses would be linked to HR. Some courses would be linked to environmental development. So you would always find that uh, there is a balance of things here and uh, everybody will get equal share of uh, like benefits or opportunities as you So next question is from uh, Sumit. Uh, the question goes as, I did my graduation in 2016. I have 46 months of work experience. How should I go about uh, preparing for the interview? Shamil, would you like to take this? Yeah, so uh, I don't personally feel that you are at any disadvantage as compared to anyone else. So if that is in your mind, possibly it's the high time to get rid of, rid of that. Uh, as far as preparing for interviews are concerned, uh, I think it will do you good if you kind of focus on the projects that you have done. Um, try to focus on, if you have some clients, try to focus on getting to know those clients better. Uh, 
maybe a little bit of brief history about where it is located, any recent issue with the client, uh, say possibly that if you worked with uh, Tata and there is some recent issue with Air India, anything can come into your uh, domain of questioning, right? So uh, know about your clients, know about your projects. Uh, say you are working in the software domain, for instance, and uh, the professor or the interviewer interviewing you happens to be from the information technology group, then they can ask you very pointed questions. So uh, it is best not to assume that the interviewer might not always be cognizant with whatever technologies or whatever uh, stack that you might be working on, right? And at the same time, it's important to also highlight your progression through uh, these 46 months or whatever duration you have worked or spent time in the industry. Uh, try to show your leadership skills, possibly your networking skills, your communication, your stakeholder management. All of this essentially creates a very holistic picture of who you are as a person and kind of also ties into your MBA journey and your reason for doing an MBA. And uh, give the interviewer a reason to believe that you are very well suited for this course. Uh, which is kind of obviously biased a little bit uh, in the admission towards, you know, people with lesser amount of work. However, having said that, there are a lot of people, especially uh, say, for instance, in my section, who have around 48 plus year months of work. So uh, the opportunity is equal for you. I think, again, that you really need to focus on selling yourself in the best possible light to the interviewer. And uh, I believe that there's no disadvantage as such for you. Just uh, adding on to what uh, Shamru said, like one question, uh, like on top of whatever he said, just one question that might come up is like, why not go for an executive MBA or why not go abroad for an MBA? So these are some questions you can prepare for worst case. But uh, yeah, I think making like selling it as a story or of those 46 months will really help you a lot. Yeah, I think it covers uh, it all. The next question is from Naseeb Punya. The question is, how how to explain two years of gap? I was preparing for government exams. So Naseeb, frankly, uh, like I I personally have a friend who, ha who has come to AM Calcutta with uh, two years of gap. And they were also preparing for a, a first civil services exam, uh, to be particular. So what really helps here is to be honest, uh, like, uh, People could have different career choices at different point of time. Uh, when you probably graduated out of your college of a, of your undergrad, so you might uh, have thought that probably civil services is the best career choice that you could think of at that particular point of time. Over time, as you prepared for your examination, uh, as you give different round of examinations in different years, you might have realized that probably uh, civil services is not the best thing for you. It does it is not suiting you. Uh, doing an MBA might help you uh, further in your career in whatever domain you want to work in. So having a really uh, good solid story helps here. And uh, there, uh, you should not, one thing uh, I, I want to point out in particular is that you should not shy away from saying that you uh, you are preparing from, uh, for the examination. Uh, you can definitely tell that. And you can back it up uh, with different choices that you made at different point of time with whatever knowledge you had. Uh, uh, just to add to what Aditya mentioned, I also feel that uh, since you have kind of pivoted uh, yourself now to an MBA, it's also very important to not paint yourself as giving up on your civil services dream, right? Because that again doesn't really come across as, uh, you know, one that perseveres or one that is resilient. Um, it is important to kind of justify that why are you trying to pivot yourself from a civil services, uh, you know, dream to an MBA. And at the same time, uh, uh, you know, kind of give arguments that seem convincing and uh, that do not come across to the interviewers as that you're choosing the easy option out, right? Uh, perspectives play a lot. And there might be a lot of interviewer bias as well in MBA interviews, because uh, ultimately at the end of the day, it's another person sitting across the table or across the screen taking an interview for you, right? So it's important to create the right perspective and set the right tone in an interview. Uh, right. So moving, moving to next question. Uh, the next question is from Ishan Chawla. Uh, I am a third year BSc Mathematics honors student from Delhi University, and I am interested in finance. So uh, should I focus on doing an MBA degree or is it better to go with MSc? I am really confused. So I can take uh, that off. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a very sort of valid confusion to have at the end of a BSc. 
um i myself was confused whether i should go for a phd or you know switch to something else um i would say here it really depends on you have to sort of think of the long term what are your priorities like in terms of msc also are you looking at doing it from india or from outside and what are the opportunities after that because msc mba both are two years but after that what is it that you actually want to do do you want to go into research like finance research do you want to do a phd in that sense or would you want to actually start working or do something like that so those are two you have to look at both of those sort of questions and figure out what you want in the long term if you want to get into corporate get into a job an mba would be better um, just because you learn a lot more about the business uh, you know aspects of things different domains marketing finance operations all of that um and of course your uh, you know your mathematics background might give you a better understanding of some of the concepts that we come across but if you feel yourself more inclined towards research towards academia i would say um, go you can go ahead with an msc um, and see where that takes you. yeah uh, yeah great uh, so next question is from fukun so the question is what makes imc stand out so i think we all can really put our heart over this question but uh, let's go with said we like to take this question yeah sure. so um, i think you know as i mentioned i think the main thing that sanabar i am see is the joker spirit like like he said you know we have this uh, kind of brotherhood and the spirit of leaving no one behind uh, apart from that i think a couple of facts are like we are part of the sems uh, mim program i think that is something that no other college or i am in india has um, apart from that i think it's just a beautiful campus i think no other campus has only lakes uh, you'll enjoy the campus the nature everything else uh, with that comes with it and yeah you all can add other points yeah uh, one thing that definitely stands out for i am calcutta apart from sems or uh, and uh, a beautiful campus is definitely uh, the kind of if if you are definitely looking if you are specifically looking for finance then this might might be one of the best choices for you uh we also have uh, have a specialized uh, laboratory uh, specifically for finance group and uh, you'll get a lot of support and mentorship from the professors and seniors over uh, here in finance as well as other subjects uh, apart from this uh, explaining about sems a bit as a set talk to uh, talk about sems so sems is an inter- international alliance of over 30 colleges uh, uh, over 30 business schools and industry uh, uh big industries across europe usa and asia so uh, what happens is it's kind of an exchange program where uh, me uh, where a couple of, where uh, essentially 20 25 students from i am calcutta go and uh, represent our campus uh, over there uh, with a uh, completion of the exchange program which uh, lasts for 3 months we you will also have a couple of seminars and uh informal meets and you'll have a business proposal project you'll also have to do an internship and that will award you a sems mim degree now this is a uh, uh, if you complete the sems program you are graduating out of iim calcutta with two degrees one would be mba degree from iim calcutta the other one would be sems mim degree from the international sems alliance and to be particular sems alliance is a very very prestigious program Uh, all over europe and usa and basically uh, all over the globe so if you have aspirations of uh, working sometime uh, in uh, europe or in usa this might be a very good opportunity for you uh, so uh, do we move to the next question uh, the next question is from uh, vipin and the question uh, so the question goes like i had a gap of 2 years due to upsc what will be the problem so uh, vipin we already discussed this question a few minutes ago uh, moving to the next if you have a follow up question or anything particular which you want to know you can just uh, leave another comment and we'll address that the next question is from uh, prathanam ks the question goes as uh, did you guys uh were you guys questioned on current affairs so i was uh, in particular uh, not questioned on current affairs the interviewer mainly revolved around my background and uh, they picked up things from uh, whatever i wrote in my application form so i would also like to know what experience did you guys have yeah so i was 
as i mentioned earlier my interview was kind i mean kind of all almost 90% of it was focused on current affairs and my general awareness of things so yeah it is best that you be prepared with what is what is going on around you uh try to uh, subscribe to say any business articles so i personally used uh, two business articles one was the gist which is a newsletter which comes in every morning on the mail and now uh, uh, that's essentially for the indian business scene and i also used morning brew for the us business scene uh, apart from that uh, now there is a point with that everyone may is you need to read newspapers uh, definitely try to read newspapers but it at times it kind of gets overwhelming to absorb so much news at the at you know in one go so uh, try to pick and choose on what you think will be the majority uh, happenings that are going around and try to read up on them have some background context <laughs> because it's not always that the interviewer just asks you what do you know about what's going on or it's not like a rote learning platform where you just tell that what's happened in yesterday's newspaper right it's also important to understand the background context and uh, be able to justify it and i've also heard that in certain interviews i personally just had i did not have an experience uh, but one of my friends did where they were asked uh, the sensex and nifty indices of that particular morning so uh, you know being aware about a little bit of the goings around is going to help you in the long run and i think it's also really relevant especially for the immba interviews uh, also just to add on to that um, like honestly i haven't faced much current affairs that was seemingly you know just a random fact usually it is in some way linked to what you have already said for example if i say i'm interested in uh, let's say any particular sport in my hobbies they might ask you something related to that so which they expect you to know or if i say in my introduction that i'm interested in sustainability they might ask me about you know later summit that has happened so it seemingly they probably would not ask me something about semiconductor chips but you know anything around what you plan to say for sure do make sure to prepare up on that Yeah, and if there are any current affairs around your workex or your industry, definitely they will ask you about, like almost hundred percent. Right, definitely agree with that. So as I said, if you are if you have a workex, be prepared with all the questions around that particular industry. Also, like you'll get a broad understanding of what is going around the country and around the world. So have knowledge of broad topics. Don't go into specific nitty gritties of a local news or something like. that so that would help you to filter out things next question is from asta roda apart from workex and academics do they focus on candidates extracurricular activities in college like working in various college society and internships when as joining the pass said so, uh yeah definitely i think uh, if you so it all depends on what you use in introduction so if you let's say speak about something in introduction which you've done in your college they they can definitely pick Up on that and ask you more about that. Uh, it will typically be some kind of extra curricular. So I was part of an actus in my UG. So uh, uh, not in I am Calcutta, but in a couple of other B schools, they did pick up on that and ask me questions around what was your role, what how what was exactly a project, and a few questions on your extra curricular. Nothing to uh, nothing nothing too much in detail, basically. Uh, yeah, I can speak for me. um yeah sure. i'll give you a ticket okay so personally for me i had one instance in across all my interviews uh, so basically i was a part of toastmasters at my um office and the interviewer also happened to be a part of a toastmasters club uh, in the college he or she was actually a part of right so uh there the interview interview essentially did not ask me nitty gritties or current affairs with respect to what toastmasters does or what do you do but essentially under certain circumstances right you might also be asked to show what your passion is in doing that particular work or what is it that makes you do it uh, and not feel bored or, or why or where do you get that actual passion to indulge in that kind of a work from right so uh, trying to justify or trying to put forward your true self and not try to you know fluff it up with a uh, you know answers you can get from anywhere on the net or any other person would uh, talk about will actually carry way more weight and uh, it can also be a great point in your candidature and at times it could also be you know a focal or pivotal point of your interview and uh, you would actually get the range of your interview in, uh, in your hand in that instance and uh, getting to drive the interview possibly is the best thing that any one of us could hope for and i think uh, you know being prepared to answer those questions and trying to show your actual passion Uh, will again help you. 
right i like agree with what shamrupan uh, said said uh, said here uh, i just want to add two more points just having a couple of uh, position of responsibilities or extracurricular activities does not help so much what did the viewers essentially want to see is what were the initiatives which you took as part of those responsibilities or what was as shamrup mentioned uh, your driving force for indulging in that extracurricular activities so even if you are mentioning something about a position of responsibility in your introduction be prepared with answers like what did you exactly do in that particular activity or not what is it generally about so this actually helps another point is as shamrup mentioned that that uh, you should be prepared with genuine answers not something that anyone can find on the internet so i uh, i i just uh, got a thought of an instance from my interview on this particular thing so towards the end of my interview uh, the interviewer asked me that what do you know about iim calcutta and the interviewer specifically mentioned don't tell about the campus has seven lakes and the campus is very beautiful and the campus is finance hub in the country so interviews essentially uh, take hundreds of interview and they know what uh, candidates are generally speaking what is the template that is floating around and if you are able to strike something uh, something personal uh, that something that is really personal to you that's uh, that stands out for the interviewer and that uh, fetches your brownie point so uh, what really helped is uh, going through genuine sources for all the information you have so what essentially i did in that particular uh, scenario is that i went through the iim calcutta website the about section in that and i quoted the things which i found on iim calcutta website so uh, things like if you come uh, to questions like uh, what do you know about iim calcutta you can mention things which are more related to academics you can mention that iim calcutta has most of the uh, courses which you can opt for yourself in your second year so those courses are optional courses and the iim calcutta floats uh, like most number of optional courses among the sister iims as you can see also uh, it is famous for its hardcore finance courses it has a finance laboratory as i said so people who are interest essentially interested in finance can go visit over there and uh, mentioning that uh, you like the interviewer essentially asked me where did you get this answer did you read core of it like he was uh, really in a good mood towards the end of the interview and uh, at that point saying it loud that i visited the official e- official web page and i read uh, this thing from there really helps you set up your credibility that uh, you are a genuine person you are like citing out good sources so that is something which uh, you might want to take care of The next question comes from Animesh Yadav. I have four years, six months of work ex in core. Should I uh, go for one year or two year MBA program? Shamru, yeah. So again, this again kind of depends on what your future trajectory looks like. Uh, typically, just to uh, you know let you know, the one year executive program that we here have on campus. uh kind of has a cohort that has a kind of an average uh, work ex of around 6 to 7 years so if you are prepared to stay on in industry and then you know join in maybe in one or two years more time uh be free uh, feel free to do so uh i think at that point in time you might also get a second dilemma as to whether you want to do a one year mba in india versus something abroad or maybe schools like isb so i think that is a different uh, trajectory uh, that you will need to essentially ponder on but uh, yeah at the same time however if you feel that you're prepared to make a career switch right now i feel the two year mba program uh, which uh, while it is a significant time investment and cost investment uh, will definitely reap dividends for you as well right uh, and if uh, i can just add on to that um, yeah. like uh, yeah the roles that you typically end up with from a two year mba program and executive mba program that we have here specifically at iim calcutta are uh, pretty different so i would suggest that uh, maybe if you are looking at a one year executive mba as an option um, do go through maybe the placement reports try to talk to some people people who are current or alumni students there to get an idea of what sense of jobs they graduate with 
maybe you can see as to um, you know what kind of you know position are you at at your company currently and uh, sort of where do you want to land up so maybe go through that comparison that might give you a better idea was i get so next question is from ishtiak uh, so this is something which uh, we have already touched upon just a uh, one liner from probably yonusha so the question goes as i am in third year of grad and physics honors and i have given cat 2022 I got calls from BBIM. What shall I say if interviewer asks me why MBA and not physics in future? Okay, so um, here I would say um, there must be some reason that you are that you've written CAD and gone through the pain of sort of studying for it. So there must be some you know inherent reason why you're looking to do an MBA. Uh, try to talk about that. Uh, maybe if um, it's not something that an interviewer might want to hear. try to refine it try to maybe talk about if you want to get into corporate in the future try to link it to long term goals if you can uh but yeah it's really a personal answer um and to be honest if i am saying like a, a lot of baby iams their interviews tend to be shorter as well because you have to interview a really a lot of candidates so in those in my experience uh, baby iam interviews were um largely sort of based on um you know general gk maybe a small why mba question so there you may not get into the actual detail and argumentation of why you want to do it just giving you a heads up you should still prepare for it but you'll have to yeah, uh, figure sort of that out on your uh, on your own right uh, so next question is from asta roda uh, when you sit for a placement in b school then do people get advantage of minimum 2 year work ex on placement in b school to get edge over other candidates who do not have minimum 2 year work ex so anusha here is fresher i i come with one year of work ex uh, so anusha probably you can take it up and we can go yeah so i think mostly it's not a disadvantage unless the company specifically has a requirement uh, for uh, people having two years of work ex i think in uh, sort of product management roles that may be a criteria but it's not universally universally applicable so i mean ha- just having a two year work ex in general may give you a slight edge in some companies but even if you don't have it it's really not a deal breaker like aditya and i have different work experience we're interning in the same place this summer so um it really does not uh, hinder your chances if you do not have the work experience if you do of course you can always try to leverage that uh, in your favor in terms of when you make your cv when you talk about uh, when you you know have your interview itself uh, but yeah maybe uh, a few short lists is uh, all the difference it makes right so it's guys it's uh, really sector specific Uh, if you are targeting broadman there are few companies who would have different criteria so you company would look for two years few companies might also look for three years of work ex so there's no ending on that few companies uh, for most of the companies i would say there is no such bar for uh, work experience as such uh, just to add to that so uh, suppose you do not have a substantial amount of work ex but you have kind of uh, you know extraordinary academic achievements or something that you've done in your extracurriculars or you know a uh, very uh, significant positions of responsibility etc so all of this can actually be craft it into a very good resume so at the end of the day if you have something uh, to you know make up for maybe lack of work ex and you're aiming for say some top roles then you always have a chance there are a you know a plethora of roles that are available um however suppose you do not have a significant amount of diversity in your resume uh, you might consider uh, you know getting some more work ex in order to try to uh, add value to your resume but at the same time if even if you come here with the amount of work ex that you have currently at the moment and you're able to put in the right amount of effort to uh, you know uh, create your cvs or uh, do the kind of prep that is needed to be done i think you will be at an equal footing uh, with the rest of the batch yeah and there was one last thing like almost uh, i think more than 30% of our batch is freshers so you don't need to worry about that right uh, more than 30% of the batch is fresher a substantial amount of people like number of people come with one year of work ex Uh, also, I would add as Shambhu uh, mentioned about uh, creating your resumes. So here, don't worry about uh, placements or resumes as of now. Just look at what do you want to do in future and how would MBA support uh, achieving that aspiration for you. Uh, for your resume, for helping you out with the placements, uh, we all would be here when you come to the campus. 
and you'll get immense amount of support from your peers from your seniors and from the placement community so that is something you should not worry about uh, just uh, one last point a uh, fun fact so anusha is a fresher aditya is one years old work x so ram has two years of work x i have three years of work x and we're all interning at the same place so again not not a big deal right uh so but uh, you will get to see a substantial amount of diversity over here that does not mean <laughs> that most of the people are here are like that so the next question is from anish uh, the question goes as i am a non engineer a bba graduate what are the math concept we should revise for the pi Sir, so, would you like to take this? So, uh, I think the main topics would include like uh, calculus, probability, permutation, combination. Uh, apart from this, like these are the main things they focus on. But apart from this, I think uh, I don't know algebra, arithmetic, all those things also would be coming. Right. Uh, the next question is from Vipin. Uh, in I M Calcutta form, there was a column for career goal. I don't have much idea, and I don't want to bluff. How to approach this question? So, uh, Shamil, maybe you want to take this? Yeah. So, I think the question or the column that you mentioned about, I'm not very exactly sure about what it was during our time. Uh, however, typically such questions are. answered in terms of what your current uh, job is what is your motivation in doing an mba i mean these are broad buckets that you can actually follow it's kind of a template like and uh, once you are done with the mba how do you see yourself in the short term and where do you see yourself in the long term and uh, if at all it is not an sop if it is uh, possibly maybe in terms of bullet points you can maybe mention what your short term goals are what your long term goals are and uh, possibly the cherry on the cake would be to essentially kind of top it off of the kind of values that you have and uh, whether uh, your goals are essentially kind of aligned with the values that you seek to you know gain or you kind of have at the moment and maybe in also terms of the abilities that you would gain throughout your mba program right and it is always a good idea to write that broadly i am thinking i want to go into this sector but one of the reason for doing an mba is also i want to explore different sectors and then decide what i really want to do so have some kind of idea it's not necessary that you need to be certain and uh, add that uh, you are really looking to explore uh, different things uh, in your mba program uh, and maybe just divide it into long term and short term goals i think that's what yeah. they look for yeah uh, the next question is also from webin i think is it true that imc has questions regarding maths in interview what are topics in maths do we have to prepare anusha would you like to think this uh yeah so um you know uh, it really depends like i did not have any math questions but i think some of my friends have had math questions so they do ask it but even if they don't ask you you don't need to panic it goes on a case to case basis like siddhant had mentioned you typically will have um, you know um uh, graphs maybe probability calculus um maybe uh, some basic algebra um geometry i mean i have not heard uh, that much per se but i was a simple differentiation integration and definitely make sure you focus on graphs and on a probability um yeah this will not be like super complex j level integrations on a basic level as long as you can uh, sort of solve the problems that should be fine um i think also what i've heard from my friends experiences is that um, they may not directly ask you uh, you know to differentiate differentiation integration mean median mode also measures of central tendency you can focus on they might sort of ask you from an application point of view like in this situation which uh, sort of mean median or mode which would be more re- relevant as a measure of central tendency a measure of data so um, don't get flustered if you get questions like that uh, maybe just pause um, and try to see how you can link um, anything that they might ask right the reason i uh, spend up this question to anusha is that she is not from a mathematics background so uh, the this was that it's not necessary that they always ask maths there could be two probable situations uh, when is that you are already from a maths background you are an engineer then they would ask question to test your mathematics skill a uh, second would be that you are not at all from mathematics in background you are a doctor suppose then they'll ask maths question to test that uh, you know maths bare minimum that you will be able to study the mba course you will be able to sail through it so uh, study your profile 
and prepare accordingly. If you are from a mathematics background, you can expect some good level questions. If you are not from math mathematics background, you should prepare for basic level questions so that you can show that you have what it needs to do MBA program. So next question is from uh, Devyani Sinha. How similar was IIMC interview to other MBA colleges like XLRI in terms of subject specific questions? Uh, Shamaru, would you like to read this? Uh, so I, I personally did not write that or give the XLRI interview, but uh, if you ask me about, you know, the range of questions that are there that are asked across MBA colleges, the flavor stays the same. Definitely some colleges will essentially try to focus more on your academics. Say if you're uh, interviewing with I'm Bangalore, they might focus a lot on your work X, which, which was the case with me because they have separate points for the work X that they are essentially allocating you to. Uh, if it's a case of Ahmedabad, again, they're very academic oriented. So even with 2.5 years of work at that, that point in time, I was asked to code bubble sort. So I had to literally write down code on a sheet of paper and show it to the interviewer. While, uh, you know, the IMC interview was kind of focused on, you know, general awareness and foreign affairs and why MBA strength, weakness kind of questions. While the other colleges were, again, you know, a mix of all this, uh, all these items. So I would say the general flavor stays the same. Uh, it is, uh, and it will most likely be dependent on your profile. If if it is, say, colleges like I'm Bangalore, or um, I guess even I'm Lucknow asked us to write a sort of an SOP last year. So uh, if you have written an SOP of sorts, it might actually be based on that. And uh, a lot on the introduction that you give, a lot on the answers that you give. And it is important that uh, if you have something that you're not really sure about, and you do not think might be worth its cost to mention it, it's best to avoid it because you might fall into a trap and the interview can just go down south from there. So I think it, it should be the same. I just try to tailor your answers to that institute, go through the website as Aditya mentioned and try to find out things that are actually relevant for you. Right. Uh, so I was going to say that I did write that and I did give the Excel interview. Mine personally was sort of a stress interview and it felt like it went on for a very long time, to be honest. Uh, it was more sort of like on a current affairs basis. They didn't ask me much about my profile. So I think it depends a lot on, um, you know, what the sentiment is that you're in terms of interviews and also your panel. So I think like there are a lot of these Telegram channels where people will write about their interview experiences. Uh, maybe once you uh, start following those, you will try, just try to see if there's a pattern or there's a difference among Excel interviews and other, uh, you know, sort of interviews. Um, apart from that, one question they might ask you in Excel because they have the HRM specialization. Why this? Why not that? That might sort of come up. So uh, make sure you have an answer for that. And I think uh, if I'm not wrong, the sort of like the SOP type questions that Excel had, that Excel gave in last year were a little bit different from the rest of the institutes. Like they did not typically ask just career goals or by MBA, they, they were slightly different. So that might be the case. Um, apart from that, just depends on your panels uh, and you know, the sentiment that you're about. Right. Uh, so we are probably spilling out of time. Uh, we'll just uh, take one last question. The question comes from Swasti Karwada. Things to add in the introduction to direct the interview way we want. So this is a nice question. Uh, so we have repeatedly mentioned that you should try to drive the interview the way you want. And the person is specifically asking the same, how do we do that? So uh, would you like to take a shot, Sid? Yeah, sure. So um, as I mentioned, like in your introduction, when you're highlighting your achievements, you highlight those which you want to talk about in the ne in the next half of your interview. So like for me, as I said, I want to talk about an actress because I know that's something that stands out. So I mentioned it once, I mentioned maybe twice. And uh, then you like you, you, you do this basically, you use it in your intro, you, maybe not only intro, even in your YMBA, you can add some achievement of yours which you want to talk about in the future. So yeah, I think you can do that definitely. Uh, I think uh, I kind of followed a template for my introduction as well, trying to kind of weave a story out of it. So I used to like mention where am I from, where I did my UG from, uh, where I did like where I worked, what was the work that I did, and then I moved on to what kind of you know pure positions of responsibility or what of my interests and hobbies, and it essentially ended with what my hobbies were or what I was interested in. So uh, this also kind of shows that you have a very holistic nature, and. Uh, 
gives a lot of things th- that the interviewer can actually pick on but again it's a very you know a very narrow stream of information that you've given to the interviewer that you actually want to speak about right and at the same vein i don't think this topic has been touched upon uh we've talked about current affairs correct but then if you are say from a particular city so i'm from calcutta you can also be asked a lot about the history of that particular city or what or, uh, so i was specifically asked what what kind of delicacies that you get in calcutta that you might not be getting in different parts of india and kind of try to compare so this is again a test between how much you are aware about the city or the place where you're from and also your general awareness in you know in general so uh try to be just directing your uh, introduction in this manner yeah and talking about what shamru just said like in terms of city i think three three cities are important your home city the college you're applying to and your uh, ug college as well so these three cities and states also are important just prepare for them right uh what i would say here is just go through your application form just uh, and go through your cv uh mark out all the keywords that you see over there if you see an actor if you see delhi if you see kolkata if you see suppose your hometown uh you see any hobby you have mentioned uh you see anything related to your work ex suppose my work ex was in entertainment laundering so um, it it is a risk management profile so i would go through all the things that could be related to that i'll go through all the cities i'll go through all my hobbies who are the important pers- persons who pursue that hobbies what are the important uh, names from india uh, who have done really well in that particular segment then about workex so what is that how is that sector really doing uh, what is the scope of that sector how is it doing in india how is it doing in other countries you can also think about your undergraduate degree so why did you not go in core why did you come here and what kind of things are you looking out to get from uh, the mba program how would you link your undergraduate to your mba program that is also essentially very important so go like just scan through your cv scan through your application form note down all the keywords that you see and prepare any questions that could come around that so that is another major thing uh, which i wanted to uh, mention here uh, on that note uh, Uh, that was about all the questions and all the experiences we wanted to share for the people who are uh, looking at applying for iim calcutta and uh, who are act- who actually got the what pi calls from iim calcutta uh, we would suggest that uh, you fill out a mentorship form that we have flo- floated in the comment uh, in the comments uh, uh, below and uh, you will actually be allotted a buddy from iim calcutta those my oh, who might be in first year or second year here and uh, we will help you sail through the entire process we will help you notify about all the comings about the dates about the interview slots and everything and also we might help you with the mock pis and uh, what pi and everything so thank you and all the best for your interviews